Hey there, I'm sure you're wondering why I haven't posted anything to this channel in a while. Um, so I did a thing. I started a mask group. Well, we know that retail and grocery workers have some of the highest exposure to the public out there. That means they are required to wear masks every day, but some may not have them. Shelby Brown joins us now in the studio with more on that group of people that's doing something about it. Hi, Shelby. One in Rima and Rob, while volunteers behind the scenes, they're working to keep essential retail workers safe and they could use a little help. Kelly Gretsch Henriquez says she started the effort after she saw social media inundated with stories from frontline workers who just couldn't get PPE. There were a lot of efforts towards healthcare workers, but there just really wasn't an infrastructure in place for um, essential, other essential workers, even uh, mental health care workers. So yeah, that's me. I'm that woman. And that's my group, Masks for Essential Retail RVA. So we have had some news coverage, um, but in the interview I did mention the fact that we do a lot of multilingual, well, really bilingual outreach, especially to Spanish speakers, and I feel like that wasn't really included in the news coverage. So I thought, what better opportunity to highlight this than on here, my YouTube channel for interpreters. So our group started on April 8th of 2020, and as of right now, we have over 250 members. We have donated over 3,000 masks, and the interesting thing is 18% of our mask donations have gone to Spanish speakers, which is really impressive, I think, because only 9% of the population of Virginia is Hispanic. And there really wasn't any other effort uh, that I noticed that I was aware of uh, in our area to provide masks to Spanish-speaking folks. I started this group because I noticed that there was a gap in a lot of other mask-making efforts here in our area. So a lot of the mask-making groups focused on healthcare workers, which is great. Healthcare workers definitely need protection, but we also have other essential workers, such as grocery store workers, folks working in childcare people working in laundromat, home improvement, cleaning, factory workers, construction workers, teachers, transportation workers, even mental health care workers, which a lot of these groups in the beginning weren't prioritizing, those folks also need these masks. They need protection. And the sad reality of this is that a lot of these essential workers are also minorities. So if you've seen anything coming out in the news about this virus, it's that COVID-19 disproportionately is affecting minorities, black and brown folks, because of existing socioeconomic disparities. At the end of the day, if we protect these people, these marginalized folks, who are more likely to end up getting sick and are more likely to die from this virus, Ultimately, we'll be keeping them out of the hospitals, and we'll also be keeping healthcare workers safe. In the beginning, it was just me sewing. The funny thing is, is I had ordered a bed sheet from my video interpreting background, uh, simply because I couldn't find a proper backdrop at the time because our supply chain was completely destroyed. So I actually only needed the flat sheet for that, so I decided to use the fitted sheet to make masks. And I was making masks with hair ties and this bed sheet. Um, and I was getting a lot of English-speaking requests. So I thought, how can I get more requests from Spanish-speaking folks? Aside from putting everything in Spanish, we also need to have a way for our Hispanic population that typically doesn't have internet access or have as much access to the internet or as much access to technology. So I started our bilingual hotline where people can call or text in to request masks. We also have a very robust labeling and handouts operation. All of our materials are bilingual. So we have our care instructions for our masks because we wanna make sure your masks last. We have our labels that say, don't iron your masks elastic. Don't place your mask in the microwave because it contains nose wire. Uh, some of our masks have filter pockets, and that requires a little know-how to get those filter pockets to work for you. Also, some of our masks, instead of having permanent nose wire, have nose wire pockets, so you have to make sure 
to let people know that they need to remove their nose wire. We also have ear savers, which are for people who use uh, elastic masks and their ears start to hurt. And of course, I had to translate that into Spanish, which was a little bit difficult for me. We even laminate our care instructions. That way we can make sure that we're able to easily disinfect every piece of literature that touches folks' hands. And this is something else that I think the news story didn't really mention very well. It's not just me doing this. I have over 250 people, including my right-hand woman, Judy, helping me out to get masks to people. I've actually stopped sewing because I have so many masks to process, because I have so many people providing me with masks to give out to the general public. So I hope you can understand why I haven't been posting as much. Um, with returning to work, managing the mask group, my stepson is being homeschooled now, simply because they've shut down all the schools. I have a lot on my plate right now. That's not to say that I won't be continuing to post my YouTube channel. It's just that my Patreon will continue to be the priority, since that's where my paying members are. So be sure to, of course, stay tuned to my YouTube channel. Probably won't be every week, but you'll definitely see something every week on my Patreon. Thanks again.